Hello and welcome to this video on one of the oldest means of creating genetically modified organisms, atomic gardening. This was an approach to developing mutant plants as a result of radiation exposure. These plants were then examined for useful traits and then those of benefit were retained whilst unsuccessful mutants were not. These programs were often part of large national or state-based programs that sought to correct species problems. Examples of this include the most common grapefruit species today. Unlike modern technology for genetically modifying species, atomic gardening is a blunt tool with poor accuracy. It had unreliable outcomes that could just as easily produce new products or kill the plant. Despite this, it was the first major effort towards a concerted application of mass crop modification. This concept produced 9 products in 1962, 77 in 1969, and 1200 in 1990. Today, there are over 2700 species that have origins in these programs. Atomic gardening begins from the same place as Godzilla, Spider-Man, and the Incredible Hulk. Atomic Weapons People wanted to find a peaceful use for this new power, and it was recognised that ionising radiation could cause damage to life. This led to bizarre mutations. Since nobody really understood what this impact was, Laboratories were set up to grow plants and examine the results. Plants being an economical and reasonably fast-growing specimen selection. They required fairly low levels of maintenance, but could yield a lot of material to test. Someone eventually realised that some of these samples had desirable traits, and so began the process of atomic gardening. The means of irradiating these plants varied slightly according to the groups involved. In the public group called the Atomic Gardening Society, Cobalt 60 was used. This group used a small scale seed bank in a backyard bunker where the seeds were exposed to radiation. This group disseminated irradiated seeds to members who grew them and made reports back to the central office. These seeds were then sent back to the central point and the process may be repeated while these same seeds may be grown without radiation for others to use. The Atomic Garden Society was an interesting program that failed due to a lack of economically viable products, but it was one of the earliest community-based scientific programs. Cobalt-60 is a good option because it is systemically produced in nuclear reactors, and by contrast to other nuclear material, has a relatively short half-life at 5.2 years. During the period of greatest interest in atomic gardening, the availability of this product was significantly better than today. Governments and larger scale private industry facilities used different formats. Some of these were a circular field which could be up to 20 kilometers across, especially from the 1950s onwards. At the center of this field was a radiation source which could be raised or lowered to increase or decrease exposure. This was commonly the used cobalt 60 some used radioactive carbon dioxide. Others used a small scale sample of seeds and exposed them to x-rays. These were then sown. The common atomic garden format was a circular field broken into wedges. These wedges were subdivided as rings within the field. Each wedge was sown with a particular crop or species. The reason behind this inefficient design was to establish a range of effect essentially a dose-response curve. This was seen with the closest crops dying from radiation exposure, the next section developing tumours, and thereafter a declining rate of mutations. This last region was the target of research. These plants appeared well in some cases, but had subtle mutations that altered performance. This idea was taken up with considerable goodwill at the time, it was seen as a means of solving looming food shortages, 
and solving deficiencies as seen by plant enthusiasts. In the 60s, prizes of up to $1,000 were offered for interesting specimens. This does raise the question of how these atomic gardens worked. Ionizing radiation works because it is a source of energy powerful enough to free electrons from atoms and molecules. This is commonly seen with cross-linking of guanine and thiamine. These two DNA nucleotides have a carbon, which on the guanine loses an electron through excitation. This creates a favorable bond between the two base pairs on the same side of the strand. This creates a nominally lethal mutation, but if the strands are repaired, it might create a beneficial mutation when that small section is removed or altered during DNA repair. Conversely, it may not make any change whatsoever, and this is part of the problem with atomic gardening. That is why atomic gardening was unfortunately highly inefficient. It may take a number of generations or seasons to produce results, and these were possibly dead-end products. As it took several generations or seasons to identify the results of radiation exposure, many facilities spent a considerable amount of wasted effort on producing large quantities of resources, and this time was used for an obsolete or pointless form of investigation. This approach to developing new plant breeds is now more than less obsolete, as we have near-precision means to make these alterations. In the day, this was a very powerful tool, but now has lost its place and is less than viable for the backyard gardener or club. Thank you for watching this video. If it has been of interest, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.